Let's take a look at this example. This time we have three loops. Three loops means we're supposed to have three mesh equations. And this is the general formula for the three mesh equation problem. We're supposed to find I1, I2, I3, three loop currents. We're supposed to find the current which goes through resistor R2, current through resistor R6, power at resistor R1, power at resistor R2, also power at resistor R8 and voltage across resistor R6. We're going to start from the mesh equations like always. So first we have to find Z11. Z11 is the sum of the impedances in loop 1. This is my loop 1 and this is going to be my loop current I1. This is my loop 2 with loop current I2 and this is my loop 3 with current loop I3. Z11 is R1 plus R2 plus R3. This is equal 2 kilo plus 800 ohms plus 1 kilo. This is equal 3.8 kilo. This is my Z11. Next I'm supposed to find Z12 which is going to be equal to Z21. This is the resistor between these two loops. This is my R2. And this is equal 800 ohms. Next I have to find Z22. Z22 is the sum of the impedances, in this case resistances, in loop 2. That's why I'm going to have R2 plus R4 plus R5 plus R6. This is equal 800 ohms plus 1.2 kilo plus 2.2 kilo plus 750 ohms. Z22 is equal 4.95 Kilohms. Next, we're supposed to find Z23, which is going to be equal to Z32. Z23 is the resistance between loop 2 and loop 3. This is equal R6, and this is 750 ohms. Next, I'm supposed to find Z3. This is the sum of all impedances, in this case, all resistances in loop 3. So I have R6 plus R7 plus R8. And this is equal 750 ohms plus 1.2 kilo plus 1 kilo. Z33 is equal 2.95 kilo. Next, I'm supposed to find the sum of the voltages in each loop. Now, Keep in mind that the short bar represents negative terminal and the longer one is representing positive terminal. We assume that current goes from positive terminal to negative. So I'm going to draw the current, which is going to be pushed by this voltage source. And also I have positive terminal over here and negative over here. This voltage source is going to push the current up. Keep in mind that we are using conventional current flow. That's why I say that the current flows from positive terminal to negative. Now, you're supposed to look at the directions of the currents. 
I1 is my reference current. If I'm going to look at the current which is pushed by this voltage source, this current is going down and my I1 goes up, so they're going to oppose each other. That's why I'm going to write that the sum of the voltages in loop 1 is equal negative V1. Negative V1 because these two currents are opposing each other. So I finished with, with V1. Next, I'm supposed to look at V2. V2 is going to push the current up. The loop current goes clockwise direction, so it's going to go down. Again, they are going to oppose each other. That's why I'm going to write over here minus V2. Negative 8 volts minus 10 volts gives me negative 18 volts. I'm finished with the voltages in loop 1. Next I have to find the sum of the voltages in loop 2. Again, I'm supposed to look at the polarities of my voltage sources. This is negative terminal, this is positive. This voltage source is going to push the current down. This one is going to push the current up. Now, my loop current goes down. My voltage source is going to push the current also down. So the directions of these two currents are the same. Now let's take a look at this voltage source the loop current is going to go up and V2 pushes the current up. So again, the directions of these two currents, this one and this one, are the same. That's why I'm going to write that the sum of the voltages in loop 2 is equal positive V2 because this direction of the current and this they are the same. That's why it's positive. And I have also positive V3 because these two currents are going the same direction. Plus V3. V2 is equal 10 volts plus V3 equals 12 volts, which is equal 22 volts. Next, I suppose to find the sum of the voltages in loop 3. Again, I'm supposed to look at the polarities of my voltage sources. I have positive terminal over here and negative over here. The current is going to be pushed by this voltage source up. The current pushed by this voltage source is going to go down. Now, this current is going to oppose my loop current because my loop current is going to go up. This one is going to go down. That's why I'm going to write over here minus V3. And these two currents are going to oppose to each other. That's why I'm going to write negative V4. And this is equal negative 12 volts minus 4.5 volts, which is equal negative 16.5 volts. Now we are ready to write the mesh equations. I'm going to look at the formula and I have in the formula I1 times Z11. We found Z11 and this is equal 3.8 kilo minus I2 and I have Z12 equals 800 ohms minus I3 Z 1, 3. 
Please keep in mind that there is no common impedance between loop 1 and loop 3. That's why I'm going to write over here 0 ohms. There is no common impedance, common resistor between loop 1 and loop because between these two loops we have loop 2. So that's why we write that Z13 or Z31 is equal 0 ohms. This is equal to the sum of the voltages in loop 1 and this is equal negative 18 volts. Next, we're supposed to write the second mesh equation. This is negative I1 and I have Z21 which is equal 800 ohms plus I2 and I have Z22 which is equal 4.95 K minus I3 and Z23. Z23 is equal 750 ohms. Is equal sum of the voltages in loop 2. We found this and it was equal 22 volts. I have second mesh equation. Next I can find the third one which is negative I1 and I have Z31. We said that there is no common resistor between these two loops, I mean loop 1 and loop 3. That's why I'm going to write over here 0 ohms minus I2 and I have Z32. Z32 was equal 750 ohms. This is the resistor between loop 3 and 2 plus I3 times Z33 which is the sum of the all resistances in loop 3 and this is equal 2.95 kilo equals the sum of the voltages in loop 3 is equal negative 16.5 volts. Next I suppose to find delta. Delta is going to be 3.8 kilo negative 800 ohms. I'm simply capping down these columns into the determinant and I have zero. Next I have negative 800 ohms, positive 4.95k, negative 750 and I have zero, negative 750 ohms, and I have 2.95k. I assume that all of you know the terminants and you're supposed to get the answer 51.46 giga ohm squared. This is your delta. Next we're supposed to find N I1. N I1 is equal. Again we are going to use the terminal, but in the first column we are going to write the constants. We are going to write the sum of the voltages in these three loops. I have negative 18 volts, I have 22 volts 
and I have negative 16.5 volts. Okay, I'm going to write the impedances over here, which is going to be negative 800 ohms. You are going to have positive 4.95K, negative 750 ohms. And in the third column, I'm supposed to write 0 ohms, negative 750 ohms, and positive 2.95 kilo. This is equal negative 210.7 mega volt ohm. This is my NI1. I can find I1. I1 is equal NI1 over delta. This is equal negative 210.7 mega volt ohm divided by delta. We found that delta is equal 51.46 giga ohm square. So I1 is going to be equal negative 4.09 milliamps. Please notice that we got negative value of I1. What does it mean? It means that the real I1 is going to go in the opposite direction to the assumed loop current I1. So in reality, the current is going to go in the opposite direction because I got negative value. Again, if you have difficulties to understand what I have done, you're supposed to go to the section for the terminants and review the terminants first and after that come back to this material. In order to find loop current I2, I'm supposed to find Ni2 first. N I2 is equal. I have to copy first column down. I have 3.8 kilo. I have minus 800 ohms and I have zero. Because I'm looking for the second current, the second column has to be replaced by these voltages. I have negative 18 volts, 22 volts, and I have minus 16.5 volts. The third column is supposed to simply copy down from these equations. I have 0, negative 750 ohms, and I have 2.95 kilo. 157.11 mega volt ohm. This is the value of my Ni2. If I have Ni2 and delta, I can find I2. I2 is equal Ni2 divided by delta. Ni2 is equal 157.11 mega volt ohm over delta and delta is 51.46 giga ohm square ohm and square will cancel out volt divided by ohm is amp i2 is equal 3.05 milliamps this is my current I2, 3.01 milliamp, is positive. It's positive, it means that it is going to go in the same direction like I assumed at the beginning. Now we are going to look for current loop I3. We have to find 
n i 3. I have to copy down the first column from my mesh equations. I have 3.8 kilo minus 800 ohms and I have 0 ohms. I have to copy the, the second column. I have negative 800 ohms, 4.95 kilo and I have minus 750 ohms and in the third column I'm supposed to write the values of the voltages. I have negative 18 volts, 22 volts, minus 16.5 volts. This is going to be equal negative 247.9 megavolt ohm. This is the value of my Ni3. If you have Ni3, you can find current I3. I3 is equal Ni3 divided by delta. Ni3 is equal negative 247.9 mega volt ohm divided by delta which is equal 51.46 giga ohm square. Ohm and square will cancel out and I have I3 equals negative 4.81 milliamps. I got negative value of loop current I3. It means that the real current is going to go in the opposite direction to the assumed one. So the real current is going to go counterclockwise. This time we're supposed to find current which goes through resistor R2. The current which will go through this resistor. Please notice that at this resistor two currents are going to meet I1 and I2 and they are going to oppose each other because I1 will go from the top to the bottom and I2 will go from the bottom to the top of this resistor. If they are going to oppose each other I am supposed to subtract them in order to find I R2. So I'm going to write IR2 equals I1 minus I2. I1 is equal negative 4.09 milliamps minus I2 3.05 milliamps. Well, equal negative 7.14 milliamps. This is the current which will go through resistor R2. Negative sign is telling me that the current is going to go from down up. Why? Because I1 is my reference current and if I got negative sign, it means that I'm going to against my reference current. This is the current which goes through resistor R2. Next, we're supposed to find the current which goes through resistor R6, IR6. Equals, again, at this resistor, two currents are going to meet, I2 and I3. They are going to oppose each other. This current I2 will go from the top to the bottom of this resistor and I3 will go from the bottom to the top. That's why I'm going to write that this is equal I2 minus I3. I2 is equal 3.05 milliamps and I3 is equal negative 4.81 milliamps. This is equal 
7.86 milliamps. Please notice that we have got positive value. In this case, the reference current is I2. That's why the current in this resistor will go from the top to the bottom, because these two currents have the same direction. Why? Because I have positive value of my current IR6, and the reference current is I2. Next, we're supposed to find the power at resistor R1. P R1. Power at this resistor. I'm going to use the formula I square times R. I. Current which goes through this resistor is I1. That's why I'm going to write over here I1. And of course this is my R1. I1 is equal negative 4.09 milliamps square times resistor R1, which is equal to kilo. And this is equal to 3.45 milliwatts. This is the power at resistor R1. Next, we're supposed to find the power at resistor R2. Again, I'm going to use the formula with the current. So I'm going to have I R2 to the second power times resistor R2. We found I R2 and it was equal minus 7.14 milliamps square times R2, which is equal 800 ohms. This is equal 4.78 milliwatts. This is the power at resistor R2. Next, we're supposed to find the power at resistor R8. The current which goes through this resistor is I3. That's why I'm going to write over here I3 squared times R8. I3 is equal negative 4.81 milliamps square times R8, which is equal 1 kilo. PR8 is equal 23.13 milliwatts. This is the power at resistor R8. Next, we're supposed to find voltage across resistor R6. You're supposed to use Ohm's law and multiply the current IR6 we found already times resistor R6. This is equal 7.86 milliamps times R6, which is equal 750 ohms. This is equal 5.5 89 volts. So we can say that the problem is solved.